Your home is where you should feel safe. It is where you let your guard down and perform your most personal routines. It is where you are most vulnerable. As you can imagine, waking up to the sound of an intruder in your home or to a shadowy figure in your bedroom would be terrifying. Even worse, unknowingly someone living in your house with you has got to rank among your worst nightmares. It's the stuff we regularly see in scary movies, but the following stories are anything but fictional. In September 1941, 59-year-old Theodore Conies headed to 3335 West Moncrief Place in Denver, Colorado to visit his old friend Philip Peters, whom he hadn't seen in many years. When Theodore arrived, he found the house empty and unlocked. Initially, he had only planned to steal food and money. However, he stumbled upon a small trap door that led to a narrow attic that was located in the ceiling of a closet and decided to occupy the small space without Phillips's knowledge. Theodore lived in the house undiscovered for about five weeks until October 17, 1941, when Philip discovered Theodore at the refrigerator. Theodore attacked Philip and pistol-whipped the 73-year-old man to death. He then returned to the attic. Police were called after a neighbor discovered the body, but the police were incredibly puzzled by the crime scene. All the doors and windows were locked, so they were uncertain how the killer got in and left the house. Philip's wife, who had been hospitalized when the crime took place, decided to remain in the home she shared with her late husband. However, after living in the house for a short time, she ultimately left and moved in with her son as she was convinced the house was haunted. Theodore, on the other hand, stayed right where he was. The next-door neighbor, Mabel, reported that she would see lights being turned on and off and hear strange noises. The police investigated but could never find anyone in the house, so many assumed the house was actually haunted. Eventually, the police started doing surveillance on the deserted home. On July 30, 1942, 11 months after moving in, the police finally saw Theodore move a curtain, exposing his face. They raided the house and caught him climbing into his attic room. Theodore Conies was arrested and convicted of murdering Philip Peters. He died on May 16, 1967, in a prison hospital. In September 2013, an off-campus house located on 13th Avenue near Ohio State University was somewhat of a revolving door, as there were many residents coming and going. At the time, 10 students lived on the second and third floor under one lease, and then the first floor was leased to five other people. This is why, at first, the 15 students living there didn't think anything too unusual was going on when the kitchen cabinet doors were left open or the microwave door wasn't closed. However, strange instances as these kept happening. The students started to investigate and began to wonder what was behind the locked door in the basement that they stumbled upon just months earlier. Before the strange happenings, the residents believed that it was just a door to a utility closet. So, after unsuccessfully opening this mysterious door, a few of the residents contacted the landlord, and a maintenance team from North Step Realty came to break it down. Shockingly, when they did, they found an empty, fully furnished room with textbooks, framed pictures, and even a sink and toilet. That night, they changed the locks on the house and posted a note asking their housemates to call them to obtain a copy of the new keys. The squatter, an OSU student identified as Jeremy, eventually got a hold of the residents and confessed to secretly living in the house and asked if he could at least come and collect his things, which they did allow him to do. When Jeremy arrived at the house for the last time, one of the residents realized that he had previously seen Jeremy, but thought he was just someone's friend. Apparently, Jeremy had gotten a key from his cousin, who'd lived in the house the summer before. North Step Realty hadn't changed the locks in years, and it was suspected that there could be hundreds of people with keys to the house on 13th Avenue. In Yelm, Washington, 73-year-old Velma Kellen couldn't make sense of the strange things happening around her house. For example, she would find her back gate mysteriously unlatched, even though she knew for sure that she'd closed it. She also noticed an odd smell, 
which she described as possibly marijuana smoke. Eventually, Velma was convinced that she was maybe becoming a bit senile in her old age and began to think nothing of the unexplainable occurrences. However, once wintertime rolled around, Velma noticed that she was having problems heating her house. So she called a repairman to come to look at the ventilation. When he inspected the underside of the house, the repairman told Velma that he was able to fix the air ducts that seemed to be causing the problem, but had discovered that someone had been squatting in the crawl space and had cut the vent to redirect the heat. It is unclear how long the person or persons were squatting there, but it is believed that they were doing so for up to a year. Shockingly enough, none of Velma's three dogs had barked or detected anyone below the house. It's fair to say that the people of Kasuya, a quiet town in western Japan, had never given much thought to Japan's homeless problem. But that all changed when one of its residents noticed that food had been mysteriously disappearing from his fridge. In 2008, a 57-year-old man living in Kasuya was convinced that someone was repeatedly breaking into his home and stealing food. However, he didn't know how that was possible. The man was sure that he locked all the doors and windows when he left. Yet, he continued to notice food items were missing. So the man set up a surveillance camera that would allow him to access the footage from his cell phone. One day, while he was out, he saw that an intruder was lurking about his home. The man immediately called the police. The police arrived expecting to apprehend an intruder, however, found the front door securely locked and the windows closed. Once inside, the police searched the house, checking everywhere someone could possibly hide, and when they slid open a closet door, they found 58-year-old Tatsuko Horikawa was nervously curled up on her side. It turned out that the homeless woman had been living on the top shelf of the man's closet for about a year. Tatsuko had snuck inside when the man left the house without locking the door. It is believed that the woman also squatted in other people's houses. She avoided detection by being incredibly neat and showering regularly while the man was out. 41-year-old Tracy was a single mother of five who lived in a house in Rock Hill, South Carolina. In September 2012, she began to hear weird sounds coming from the attic and noticed nails were popping out of the ceiling. Eventually, Tracy and two of her sons went into the attic to investigate but didn't find anything out of the norm. Her boys made light of the situation by teasing Tracy about getting older and even tried to convince her that she was hearing things. However, she just couldn't shake the uneasy feeling she had. One night, when Tracy was working on her laptop in the bedroom, a little bit of plaster fell on her from movement in the attic. Another night, at 2.30 a.m., Tracy kept hearing a bumping, thumping noise and knew for certain that either something or somebody was in the attic. She immediately called her nephew to come take a look. There, in the back corner, was Tracy's sleeping ex-boyfriend, whom she dated 12 years prior. Once awoken, he ran down the stairs and out of the house before police arrived. It was discovered that he had been living there for about two weeks. Just 90 days before that, he'd gotten out of prison for stealing Tracy's car. She never considered rekindling their relationship despite his many letters from prison claiming that he had changed. In the attic, they found several sonic cups full of feces and urine. They also found a hole that he had cut so he could watch Tracy in her bedroom. It was unclear how he ever gained access to the attic, as the only access was through a door from inside the hallway that connected her children's bedrooms. Unfortunately, after the ex-boyfriend fled, no report of him being caught has ever been reported. I'd like to take a second to thank you for tuning into Horrific Nightmares. If you would like to support this channel, you can leave a comment below and hit the like button. If you enjoyed today's episode, please share it with anyone you know who may enjoy it as well. And if you already aren't, I hope you would consider subscribing to the channel so that you won't miss any of my upcoming episodes. Once again, thank you for tuning in, and I'll see you next time.